Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here with FunctionalBodybuilding.com and today I'm going to show you a typical day of training from my Persist Classic program, which I also do as my personal workout. We're also going to be showing you scaling options and different ways to make this workout your own, since functional bodybuilding is highly adaptable to each person's skill level and needs. So in a recent video I showed a training day from my competitive years of CrossFit, but today my life looks very different. I've got two little girls, I run a business with a dozen employees, and my wife and I love to make time for things that we love to do outside of training. So with these large shifts in priorities, I've had to adapt many things about my lifestyle and my training as well. But I still love to move, I love to challenge my body, but I also love to show up for the other areas of my life. So I'm not ready to accept the stereotypical dad bod, and I still want to look good on top of holding a high level of fitness. Now I know many of you are in the same boat and you want to get in and out of the gym, get a great workout that feels challenging but not soul crushing, and know that your workouts are developing strength and confidence in your body, which is exactly how I've designed Persist Classic as a program. Now, to be transparent, I do workouts like this about four to five times a week. In addition, I also ride my mountain bike and I'm active throughout the day with some low impact cardio or activities with my family. So this isn't 100% of what I do each day, but it is what I do in the gym, to the T. And it's also leaving me with lots of energy in the tank, which is great if you also have other activities and sports in your life that you love to do. It's time to dive into the workout breakdown. And a Persist Classic workout will always come with about five parts to it. The first part is a warm up. Then we work on skill or athleticism, followed by strength and hypertrophy, then some conditioning or fatigued finishers, and we usually finish with a stretch or a cool down. So let's dive into the warm up right now. If you ever feel like the first 10 minutes of your workout are a waste, uh, that you don't know how to warm up effectively, or if you just skip warming up altogether, see what you can take away from this one. When programmed with care, and perform with intention. The warm up will increase your performance for the day. It will improve your range of motion and bulletproof your body against aches and injuries that might show up in training. Today we got started with reverse sled drags and sled pushes for about five minutes continuously. This helps to strengthen your knees, improve ankle flexibility and mobility, and build a great sweat before training. Now, if you don't have a sled or you want to scale, you can always just walk backwards for three to five minutes, either outside or on a treadmill, or hop on a bike for about the same amount of time, a stationary bike, and pedal at a nice easy pace. I like to take a joint specific approach to building warmups as well, and I think about the movements that prepare these joints that will have a heavy demand placed on them in training. So today, there's going to be a considerable amount of jumping and hinging that's going to happen, which demand a lot out of the ankles and the posterior chain. Movements like the tibialis raise and the calf raise get the ankles strong and ready. Additionally, movements like the dumbbell Jefferson's curl are terrific for opening up the posterior chain and the hamstrings. We always aim to have ways of regressing movements if you lack equipment or you need an easier option. As an example, if you don't have a tib bar or a seated calf machine, both the tibialis raise and the seated calf raise can be performed with body weight or with gym equipment staples like a set of dumbbells uh, or a weight plate in a box. All right, now we're jumping into part one of training after the warm up, which is barbell cycling or kettlebell cycling. Now we've gotten some extra movement and reps in from the warm up, and now you're ready to immediately hit the skill and athleticism section of training. This might include Olympic lifts, kettlebell flows, barbell cycling, or hot start sprint work, and even jumping. The goal is to get the brain to wake up and to use that energy that you have early on in training to complete complex tasks. Today we had a barbell cycling complex, which gives a small hit of aerobic training, but also develops complex movement patterns at lower loads. With this clean complex, we're also working posterior chain muscle endurance. Now, although barbells can be loads of fun and is one of my personal favorite tools in the gym, not everyone feels experienced enough or prefers to use them in their own training. So I'll often provide kettlebell alternatives that mimic movement patterns and can be much less intimidating to try and learn. The benefits are pretty much identical. 
Okay, this skill and athleticism section of a training took us about 12 minutes to complete from start to finish, and now we're moving on to the strength portion of the workout. The prescribed rep ranges today bias strength development and two movements provided. Some days we'll work on higher rep ranges and longer time under tension to bias hypertrophy work. I mentioned that we're doing positional strength work today with the deficit clean grip deadlift. What do I mean by that? Well, as we age, I think it's very important to maintain good top end strength, but it's equally important to develop positional strength. This is like a combination between great technical movement, full range of motion around joints, and strength capacity on top of those two foundations. The way I see it, short range of motion with great strength just doesn't cut it, and suboptimal form with heavy weights isn't doing you any favors in the long term. Certain exercises will demand more technical proficiency and range of motion than others. The deficit clean grip deadlift is one of them and was purposely chosen for this reason in this workout. Additionally, we're focusing on hamstring strength with the Nordic curls in this superset. Now the Nordic curl is one of the most challenging exercises I've encountered in my adult training life. Perhaps this is due to the neglect I've given it over the years, but here I am at 36 years old trying my hardest to build the capacity to just do a single rep to full range of motion under complete control. I'm not there yet, but I've been inspired by Ben Patrick, knees over toes guy, to chase that elusive full range of motion Nordic in order to get bulletproof with my knees and build some sexy hamstrings while I'm at it. And like everything in functional bodybuilding, you can always regress and scale all of your training, and the Nordics are no exception. So we superset these two movements like we often do in persist training to keep your time in the gym efficient and use specific tempos to optimize the characteristics we're trying to achieve within a given exercise. The strength work today took us an additional 15 minutes. We only did three sets each, but we'll often provide a range of work if you have extra time and you want to get after it and maybe do an additional fourth set. Both of us were intentional about keeping our weights light on the deadlift to prioritize position and range of motion and to save energy for that max effort Nordic that we were trying to both accomplish. Those are absolutely brutal. It was time to move on to our final section of training, which we collectively called our conditioning, usually running between 10 to 20 minutes. However, one day a week, I like to bias longer conditioning formats like the one that you're seeing today. From start to finish, this one's gonna require 30 minute time blocks. And for most of my clients, they may come to the gym, warm up, and just jump right into this type of workout and call it a day. Today's conditioning workout had rest breaks built in very intentionally with the aim of making this mixed modal training challenging yet sustainable. See, the beauty of this workout was that although it had seven different movements inside of it, there were only two pieces of equipment that you actually needed to get it done. First, you needed a bike and then a set of dumbbells. As is often the case with our workouts, we like to provide a range of target work and coaching notes to guide our athletes on how to tackle the workouts to best suit their abilities and still get the desired stimulus. We also include instructions if you're short on time and you need to squeeze the whole workout in with under an hour or even less. My training partner today, Satya, and I have very different backgrounds in training, but we were both able to use these formats and methods to progress our fitness today. At the end of the day, only you know if your training is leading you in the right direction. Does it improve your fitness, balance your life, leave you feeling energized to do what you love? Your training style should provide you the flexibility and the guidance to make every single day work for you. That is what I love about functional bodybuilding limited ego, movements that scale up or down, and ways to keep the intensity in check or go for it some days that you want to. As an example, today I was feeling pretty wrecked from about a 28 mile backpacking trip I did over the weekend. So I purposefully dialed things back just a touch and finished the day feeling stronger than when I started. See, within functional bodybuilding, we're always providing ways for you to learn how to be a thinking athlete and to take a workout like this written for a group and make it the most for your own goals and your own needs. So what do you think? Do you want to give it a go? Click the link in the description below. Come train with me online in the Persist program. 
You can get two weeks free trial that includes Persist Classic training like you saw here today, as well as the functional body composition track that is focused on aesthetics. And lastly, we always have a minimalist track as well for those of you who only have access to your body weight or a set of dumbbells at home. I hope to see you there. See you next time. Thank you.